This is lesson 6.4, problem solving with two variables. So far in this chapter, we've learned what system of linear equations are, and we know three ways to solve systems of linear equations, either by graphing, solving with elimination, or solving by substitution. In this lesson, we're gonna combine everything we've learned so far in order to set up and solve word problems that exist in our everyday life. So I've listed out everything step-by-step step with an example of how to set up and solve word problems. Your first step is always to identify your two unknown values, and you have to assign variables to these unknowns. You're gonna write let statements to do this uh, assignment. So in this example, um, Anna spent $40 on two shirts and three hats. Carly spent $55 on four shirts and one hat. What is the price of each shirt and each hat? So in this problem, we ask ourselves, what are our unknown values? We don't know the price of the shirt. We don't know the price of the hat. So those are our two unknowns. It makes the most sense to just let X and Y be the variables for your unknowns, but you're welcome to use other letters if that works better for you. So I write my let statements of let X represent the cost of a shirt, let Y represents the cost of a hat. It doesn't matter which letter goes with which item. You just need to assign these unknowns a variable. The next step is identify your known values. What do you know? And then you want to use this information to set up two linear equations to represent the situation. So what we do know is that Anna spent a total of $40 and got two shirts and three hats. We also know that Carly spent $55 on four shirts and one hat. So how can we take this information with our two new variables, X and Y, and put these into linear equations that we can then solve? We're going to want to write one equation for Anna and one equation for Carly because they have two different situations there. So if Anna spent, uh, she got two shirts and we know that X now represents the cost of a shirt. So how much did she spend in total on shirts? Two X. And she bought two and the price is X. For hats, she bought three of them and the price of a hat is Y. And in total, she spent $40. So that would be the equation that we write for Anna's situation. Carly would be very similar. Uh, she bought four shirts at price X. She bought one hat at price Y. She spent a total of $55. So that equation represents Carly's situation. In these two equations, the X and Y represent the same thing, the cost of the shirt or the cost of the hat. Um, the numbers on the right side of the equation represent the total amount of money spent, and the other coefficients represent how many of those shirts or hats were purchased. Once we have our equation set up, we need to just solve using any of the, the methods that we already know, elimination, substitution, or graphing. I chose to do elimination because it looked pretty easy to set up. So I write my two equations. In this case, if I multiply the first equation by two, it'll make my x values identical. So that's what I chose to do. I rewrote my equations over here with the first one, um, everything has been doubled. When I go to do my elimination, the four x terms cancel out and I'm left with 5y equals 25. So that means that y is equal to five. And I use this value, sub it into either of the original equations, and I find that x is equal to 12 and a half. Normally, you leave your answer in fraction form, but when there's context in a word problem, you just wanna ask yourself, does it make more sense to have it in decimal form or fraction form? Remember, x and y represent the price of a shirt or a hat, so it doesn't really make sense to say the price is 50 over four, or 25 over two. It makes sense to represent price as a decimal because that's how we talk about dollars and cents. So that's why I converted it to a decimal of 12.5. The last step is very important for word problems. You can't just leave it at X is this and Y is this. You have to apply the context to this problem again. We are wondering what is the price of each shirt and each hat? So we had to write a concluding sentence that answers this question that includes units. So I would say a shirt is $12.50, not 12.5, and a hat is $5, because that's originally what my X and Y were assigned to. It's also very important that you ask yourself in this step, does this make sense in the context of the problem? If I had got that the hat was um, $60 and the shirt was $2, that might be a red flag that something's off. Because you know if you're shopping, generally a shirt would probably be more expensive than a hat. Maybe not, um, but it's just a good idea to think about the context of the problem and does this make sense? Or let's say something had gone horribly wrong with your math and you got that the shirt is like $900. That also would be an indication that maybe something's gone wrong because that can't possibly be true. 
But in this case, I think it's pretty reasonable to say, you know, maybe it's maybe it's a t-shirt for $12.50 and a pretty cheap hat for $5. I think that makes sense. We'll do some more examples to get the hang of it. In this one, um, adult tickets for the school play are $12 and children's tickets are $8. If a theater holds 300 seats and the sold out performance brings in $3,280, how many children and adults attended the play? So our first step is to look at what, what are our unknown values and write let statements to assign variables to these unknowns. So when you're looking for this information, it makes sense to look what, where is the question mark and where is the question in this problem? It's asking how many children and adults attended the play. But those are our two unknowns. X can represent the number of adults, Y can represent the number of children. Now we have to set up our two equations. What makes sense based on the information we do know? Well, we know that adult tickets are $12 and children's tickets are $8. We know the total number of seats and the total amount of money made. So I think it makes sense for the first equation to be representing how many seats there were and the second equation to be associated with the cost or the revenue. So to write an equation for the number of seats is actually quite straightforward. We know that there's 300 seats um, and X and Y represent how many adults and children there were. So that equation is just X plus Y equals 300. The number of adults that went to the show and the number of children that went to the show, that has to add up to be 300 because it was a sold out performance. The second equation has to do with the cost and revenue. So if adult tickets are $12 and we sold X of them, and then you add the cost of children's tickets, uh, $8 times Y, how many children were there, you would get the total amount made of 3,280. So if we knew X and Y, how many of each of these age groups were there, multiply it by the price of their ticket, you should get the total revenue made. Creating the equations is arguably the toughest part of solving word problems with systems. At this point, we're pretty comfortable with doing the math to actually solve them, but setting them up is what can be difficult. Now that we have them set up, I decided to solve by substitution because it was pretty easy to isolate 4x in the first equation. So I took that, I said x is equal to 300 minus y, and I substituted that into the second equation. I distributed the 12 into the brackets. I collected my like terms. I brought the 3,600 to the other side, and I isolated for y. Then I got y is 80, and I substituted that into either of the original equations, and I got that x is 220. So I write a concluding sentence. That means there's 220 adults and 80 children that attended the play. And then you ask yourself, does that make sense? I think that's pretty reasonable for this context. And I think we're finished. Here's another type of problem you might see. Um, the difference of two numbers is eight and the sum is 34. What are the two numbers? So it sounds a little bit simpler and the actual algebra to solve this is a lot simpler. But again, you have to be able to set up the equations to represent this. So what are our two unknowns? They're whatever the two numbers are. So let's say X is the first one and Y represents the second number. Now we need to set up our two equations. We do have two uh, known pieces of information. We know that they have a difference of eight and a sum of 34. So to write the difference of eight, to take those words and translate it into a math equation, we would say X minus Y equals eight. The difference or the subtraction between the two numbers is eight. And the sum is 34, so same idea, but we'll just say x plus y equals 34. So then I decide to solve by elimination because the x values are already the same. So I can go right into eliminating. Those can just disappear. We've got negative 2y equals negative 26. So we solve and get that y is 13. And we take that, sub it into either of the original problem or original equations, we get x is 21. And then you write a concluding sentence. The two numbers are 21 and 13. And you can very quickly check if this is correct. Um, is the difference between these um, eight? Yes, it is. Do these two add to 34? Yes, they do. So we're good. The last one, um, the perimeter of a rectangle is 84 centimeters. The length of the rectangle is eight centimeters longer than the width. What are the dimensions of the rectangle? So again, when we're looking for our unknowns, look for the question mark. What are they actually, actually asking us for? The dimensions. So X can represent the length and Y can represent the width. This is an example where if you want to use L for the length and W for the width, that's fine too. I'm going to keep it simple with my X's and Y's. 
Now we have to create two equations to represent the situation using the unknowns x and y and the knowns. So one thing we do know is that the perimeter of the rectangle is 84 centimeters. How do we write an equation for this? We know that the perimeter is equal to two times the length plus two times the width because you just add all the side lengths up. And we now know that x and y represent the length and the width. So we can write the equation 2x plus 2y equals 84. That's just our perimeter equation. For the second equation, what else do we know? We know that the length is eight centimeters longer than the width. So you could write this a couple different ways. I wrote it as x represents length. So the length minus eight centimeters is equal to the width. You also could have written it as the width plus eight centimeters equals x. That's totally fine too. That's if you just rearrange this equation, that's what you would get. I decided to set it up this way. And now we want to solve. I decided to solve by substitution because it was pretty easy to isolate for um, the x, or actually, sorry, the y is already isolated for in that second equation. So I substitute in the first one, I substitute y with x minus eight. I distribute the two into the brackets, collect my like terms, and I get that x is 25. I sub that into one of my original equations and I get y is 17. Always remember to write your concluding sentence. Therefore, the length is 25 centimeters. Don't forget your units. And the width is 17 centimeters. So here's some, uh, some summary of what we've just learned. Um, the first is that systems of linear equations are super useful because there are tons of real world applications. We only looked at a couple examples, but you'll see in your homework too, all sorts of situations where it might be useful to be able to set up and solve systems of linear equations. Um, like all word problems, you wanna start with identifying what you know and what you don't know. So if you're feeling stuck about how to start, separate those two things and write out what you know and what you don't know. Uh, when you're coming up with equations to represent the situation, try tr translating the words to math by saying the expression out loud. So for example, the words given to us might be two shirts and three hats cost $20. So how do you translate that to math? You can try it out with this equation and say it out loud. Well, two times the cost of the shirt plus three times the cost of the hat equals $20. Have I set this up correctly? I think so. And then lastly, um, to solve the word problem, you can choose whichever method you like best. Uh, I solved just using algebra methods in this case because it's almost always easier than graphing. But if you really like graphing or if you have access to graphing technology, then it might be better to do that. So some graphing technology examples would be a graphing calculator or an online application like Desmos or Wolfram Alpha. You're welcome to Google those and try to solve some of your problems, uh, your word problems with graphical solutions on either of those sites. So this is how we can set up and solve word problems with systems of linear equations.